Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 8 of Bumbling Through Birthright where we get a new character. If this is your first time here or you are not caught up, make sure you check out the link down in the description box and also right there. Otherwise, let's just get into the story. So for this session, we had four players, which kind of seems to be our typical lately. Like we haven't had the massive amounts that we had often in Dark Sun. So there's Roz, there was Yawn, and there was Valkyrie, and then there was a new player. So one of our friends has been working out away for like, <sighs> since May, like since we end at Dark Sun, basically, he has been gone and he's finally back where he can consistently be in town, which means he can consistently come and play. But he hadn't rolled up a character yet because this was his first time playing Birthright. He'd been communicating with the DM, but this was like the first time where he's here and he's rolling up a character. So he rolled up a barbarian whose name is Rainier, and he's actually also part of the nomadic tribe, so he knows Renolfer pretty well. Renolfer's one of our other characters. And it worked out really well because Brindis fell ill for this session, and so Brindis is off trying to get better. Renolfer is helping her to get better, and suggested that, hey, maybe his friend Rainier join our party in his absence. And then we also had to have a regent because Brindis wasn't there, and on Renolfer's request, she appointed Rainier Regent, which, considering this is his first time, you know, in the city, so I'm sure that's gonna go great. So when this session starts, we're about midwinter now, so it's still terrible, nobody really wants to travel outside of the city, and our royal bard, Gunlogger, who Brindis hired forever ago, has come back to the city, and anywhere people listen to him, he is spouting great tales about Brindis and her adventuring group and all the things they've done and yes some of them are true and other ones are completely made up but you know we run across him when we go to inns and stuff and he's just did you hear about this? We end up at Three Trees Outpost which is Jans's company and Olaf is there and Olaf owns Olaf's Armaments which is a company under the umbrella of Jans's company and he's like listen there's something in my basement I'm not sure what it is there's a lot of loud crashing and banging and I've just locked the door and I won't go down there but I'm running out of stock so can you help me so that I can go downstairs and get my stock and open my company back up and Jan is like yeah totally like you're you're part of my crew we take care of our crew. Meanwhile, Sten has been looking for waterfront properties that are for sale, and so he has found two. He mentions them to Jan. They're, I think, like 1,200 and 1,400 gold pieces each, and so we're heading the way to go look at them, but first we have to deal with Olaf. Because if Olaf isn't profitable, then Jan is not profitable. So we go there, he lets us in, and we can hear like noise down in the basement. He unlocks it, we go in, he locks it behind us. Rainier is going first. It's very tight, we're going down some stairs. So I think it goes Rainier, Jan, Valkyrie, and then Roz, because Roz doesn't like to get up in people's business. And Rainier has a torch, he's looking around, and all of a sudden the torchlight catches two pairs of eyes looking back at us. Giant cat, saber tooth, tigers, cause why not? So in this battle there's a lot of fighty fighty and a lot of stabby stabby and a lot of scratchy scratchy and a little bit of bitey bitey. But one of the funniest things that happen is Jan has a help action where he can like distract other people so somebody can get advantage on an attack and well what do you do with cats? He had strings so he manages to distract the first one with some string like hey pay attention here and then the other one he like finds a rug and he like puts his foot under it so the cat's like oh is there a mouse under there? So we take these saber tooth tigers out, right here skins one because when we were coming into the basement, Ross was like, it's cold down here, I'm cold, and he's like, here you go, and it's like all like covered in gross, um, and then Jan's like, I think I know how these saber tooth tigers ended up here, because when we were searching around, we found a crate that said pig iron on it, but it was like saber tooth tiger net, like bedding and food and all that stuff, so yeah. So Jan asks Rainier to make it so we can make a taxidermy saber tooth tiger. So he does that, we go upstairs, we ask Olaf where the uh, pig iron came from, and he's like, I don't know, it just showed up, and I'm not gonna say no to pig iron. So we're pretty sure it was Stormholzen, because Stormholzen hates Jan, and if you remember, Jan managed to level up Olaf's armaments, and so 
Storm Holton couldn't level up his company. So, yeah, probably what happened. Olaf is like, is this because I'm in business with you that this happened? And Jan was like, yeah, sorry, like, here's some money to take care of the damage, I'm sorry. And he's like, thanks for being honest. But also, I think he's a little bit concerned. So once we finish there, we continue on our way to go see these waterfront properties, and we go in front of Storm Holton's company, which is called Steward Vic Traders, and there's a sleigh out front, and he is getting ready to go travel off to Guildsby. If you remember at the beginning of the last episode, I talked about how there had been uprising in Guildsby, and that now the guilds are in charge there. Well, Storm Holton actually has a guild there, and he kind of wants to purchase another one. It's the Woodcutter's Guild. That one is available. And so he's, you know, going out there to try to purchase that from auction and also to run for a government position once he gets up there. Well, basically all thought of going to look at these other properties has gone out the window because Jan has to beat Stormholtz and up to Guildsby because he needs to get that company. He needs to be in charge of the Woodcutter's Guild. So as quick as we can, we get a sled ready and we get some horses, we get some supplies, and we just hit it hard. We leave that night, so we're, you know, a couple hours behind, but we are pushing hard. We're using anything we can to our advantage, and we managed to actually get to Gillsby about 12 hours before Storm holds him, because why would he think we were coming after him? So he's taking a sweet time, resting for the night, lollygagging, all that fun stuff. So when we get there, Jan decides to try to pay off some of the officials to really hassle Stormholt so when he comes in. He also looks into like buying out all the inns, but there are a lot of inns and that's just too much money, especially if he wants to try to buy this guild. And then we're shopping around and Jan is like, you know what, I want to get some fancy duds because I want to be the most impressive looking guy when we walk in there, and y'all are getting fancy duds too. So. Roz and Val got like some really nice fancy clothes, but Rainier was like, you know what, I'm the son of a chieftain, I have some nice furs. So Jan was okay with that. But as we're coming out of the tailor with like these really fancy clothes, ten guys come up to us and they're like, listen, you're looking all fancy, you need to pay us off, I'm the king of Gillsby. Which is so wrong because there isn't a king and Rainier's like, but I'm, I'm the queen. Kind of, I mean he's not really the queen, he's acting regent, but you know, whatever. So we end up getting into a fight with these guys. We knock out all his goons. Val kills him, stabs him through the heart because he's the king. Maybe he's got blood points and he did. So now she got some blood points, which kind of makes up for Jan stealing her blood points previously. But now Jan's beautiful new clothes are damaged. So he brings them back inside and Val brings hers. So we get everything cleaned up and ready to go again. On our way back to our inn, we stop at an apothecary because Roz is like, you know what, I got, I got some healing potions, like maybe I can find some other cool potions. So he does actually find a potion that lets you climb walls as fast as you can walk, and he manages to do a straight exchange, like a healing potion for that, so that's great, didn't cost any money. And then he goes outside, mixes two potions together, because so many healing potions, and this one, it goes pretty well it seems to, and then he tries it and fails a con save, but it's fine, it's not poison or anything, but it is a truth serum, so now Roz has to tell the truth for the next hour. Which ends up kind of having hilarious consequences, because Roz normally keeps to himself. So we get back to the Stone Flag and Inn, we're just like chilling in the common space, and in comes Storm Holton, because I guess this is the nicest inn here, so obviously he'd want to stay here too. And he's complaining about tax officials hassling him, taking forever for him to get into town, and then he sees Jan, and he's like, oh, makes sense. So he goes up to his room, and we start to kind of brainstorm ways to screw with him, because otherwise Jan is gonna have to go up against him at the auction. So Roz is all like, I, I don't, I don't think we should do anything, and then he's like, well, you know what, actually I just got a great idea, and like, can't tell a lie, so this is what I think we should do. I think we should steal Storm Holtzen's clothes, because he's not gonna show up without any clothes on. And so we do just that. Rainier, like, goes back and forth, like, talks to the thugs, and, like, tries to be like, hey, wanna go down for a drink? Meanwhile, Roz and Jan sneak up into the rafters above Storm Holtzen's room. Jan has his string that he, like, ties a bent nail to, and manages to, like, fish out all his clothes, because, like, he got, like, something ridiculous, like, 27 stealth to make this happen. And then Roz is like, you know, it'd be really hilarious if you wore Storm Holtzen's clothes tomorrow. So Jan does. So in the morning, we all get ready to go and just like peace out as fast as we can because if we're there, Storm Holtzen's quickly gonna, I mean, he's gonna know it was us, but if we're there, we might get into a fight and we can't miss this auction. So we race to the auction hall and the person in charge of the auction is like, you know what? 
Hopefully there won't be any like bandits and ruffians coming in, but you know, that's something we should watch for. And so Roz is like, we should just close the doors and lock them all so that like, you know, nobody can get in, no latecomers. <laughs> yeah, trying to screw over Stormholtzen a little bit more. But then a raven shows up at the window with a note from Stormholtzen saying, I can't make it due to extenuating circumstances. Someone from my family is going to bid on my behalf. And here's where Jan learns something very important about Valkyrie. Valkyrie is Stormholtzen's cousin. So now the two of them are trying to outbid each other for this guild. But Stormholtzen was never like, go as far as you can or whatnot for cost for Valkyrie. But she only went up to, I think, like five gold bars and she went going further because she didn't want to bankrupt her cousin. And so Jan ended up getting the Woodcutter's Guild for 5.5 gold bars which he thinks is a pretty good deal. Also, he stole Stormholtzen's clothes and he looks resplendent. That night, we go back to the inn and shock of all shocks, Stormholtzen has bought the inn out. But just because we can't stay there doesn't mean we can't be annoying. So Rainier goes and finds this guy's bagpipes and just starts making noise. Jan is singing along with him. Valkyrie and Roz stay for a little while and then they leave and they go to the Jarl's longhouse because they're like, oh, we'll spend the night there and eventually they make it back too. In the morning, we go to bring back the set of bagpipes that Rainier had taken and they're like covered with beer and barbecue sauce. And the guy's like, are you kidding me? And Rainier's like, take it up with the queen. So I was like, listen buddy, I'll give you the money that you need to buy new ones. Let this idiot keep these bagpipes. Are we square? So all was well. And then we return to the longhouse and it is time for the government election. So Jan is now wearing his own clothes, the ones he bought the day before. They're all nice and fancy because, you know, Storm's clothes. You can only wear that for so long. And Storm Holton walks in, but guess who had to buy new clothes in town? Wearing the same clothes. <laughs> Awkward. Anyway, so there are three people that are put up to be the head of Guildsby. Stormholtz and Jan and this other guy who, who is the head of the Bricklayers Guild. He doesn't do so well even though Rainier was supporting him as the Queen didn't work out so well. And then Jan and Storm managed to just like completely tie thanks to Valkyrie kind of messing with her cousin a little bit. So they decide somehow to form a collision government because they are not friends at all so for them to be like yeah let's do this together, let's do a coalition, we each have veto rights done. So now Jan's a government official again because he was already the government official like a trade minister I think. But whatever, maybe this is the start of a beautiful relationship for those two guys who couldn't get along at all before. So you know once all that is sorted out we head back to Holling Holland and we don't have any issues on the way and we get back just in time for <gasps> petitioners. Now this could be a huge problem because we have Rainier acting as the regent and Rainier throughout the session has proven himself to be a little bit of an idiot um, and not well versed to the ways of the city because he's a nomad. So the first petitioners that come up are a farmer and a chieftain who owns the land and basically the farmer's like this guy is treating us like crap. I want to farm here though so make him change his ways and the chieftain's like I need to worry about the army. I don't have time to deal with my land so we're like well why don't you hire someone? He's like I don't want to hire someone. I don't want to waste money. But at the end of the day Rainier is like, I am commanding you to hire a steward for your land, and I'm sure that will be a problem later. Next, Lady Thora, the ambassador to Spinnick, shows up and she goes, listen, we heard you got attacked. I'm here to remind you that Spinnick is willing to fight on your behalf. You have been attacked. We will come to arms if you so choose. Kane, the ambassador from Ryuvik, is there and he, so we call him up and he's like, listen, those were just rogues, they were not part of our army, they weren't sanctioned, they're just hungry people, they just want food. Maybe true, maybe they're just trying to bully us into doing what they want us to do, I don't know. So we send him away and we kind of talk things through. So we say, hey, if that's true that you're starving, we're willing to open up a trade line with you with uh, Jan here, Three Trees Trading, so get a line set up give him a holding in your capital. Well, I mean, it's not really the capital, but the capital along the water, that's where the king spends most of his time. And we will trade with you. And also Rainier's like, then we can get spies in there. He doesn't say that out loud, obviously. So Kane goes away to go propose this idea. And Roz, as the foreign trade minister, goes to send a raven to Vardigan, who is our ambassador to the country, and say, can you go to Iver, which is that city? And let us know what the conditions are there. Like, is it actual poverty in the entire country? Because the city where he is, it is pretty poverty stricken. Or does the king have a lot of wealth that he's not letting on about? 
Also, Rainier commissioned some propaganda posters to put on the outside of our wall to be like, listen, we're trying to trade with you. If conditions are still terrible, it's your king. You know, start getting the country to go against itself. And then finally, Byrne, who is like the military marshal, shows up and he's like, listen, this part of this wall up here, we need to take care of it. It was where we just were, where we took out the Orogs. They're gonna get in through there again, the Orogs, or else the people from Yuvik are gonna come and attack us through there. We need to just decimate this entire forest, screw the druids, and build a fence, and repair the wall. Well, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think any of us thought that was a good idea. So Ra suggested that we trade with Lady Sarkali. I could be wrong on how to pronounce that who is up in the north of Ryuvik. She doesn't like the king. She's got a forest, so maybe she's willing to trade with us and we can get like half the wood that we need and also like have direct communication with her. We can repair our wall and then maybe when the time comes it would be us, her, and Spinnick who would be attacking the bandit king here. So we set up a commission to go figure out how much wood we actually need and we also reach out to her and we'll see how that goes next session. That's the end of the petitioners. Then we did one week of downtime to pass the time. Roz makes potions as he generally does because they are a great source of income. But while he's walking down the street after selling off some of his potions, the dwarf comes up with one of his potions and goes, is this your craftsmanship? And Roz is like, yeah, of course it is. He like smashes it and he's like, you stole our ancient lore. I'm coming for you or something like that because I rolled a complication. I knew it was coming. I felt it. So that's, he left, I mean, right away, but I'm sure that's gonna come back to haunt me later. Val went and did her usual pit fighting and she did quite well. Jan was like, you know, I've been expanding a lot. I need to work. So he spent the week working. And then Rainier decided to pit fight as well. And I don't think it went so well. But that is the end of that session. A lot of stuff happened there. Again, not a lot of fights. Like I was saying uh, in the last episode, there seems to be less fighting in Birthright than any other D&D campaign I've ever played. But if you're interested to see what consequences everything we did in this episode have later, make sure you do subscribe so you can see when I post the next video. With that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.